I think the worst possible way to start a talk would be by asking the audience to do some mental arithmetic. So I apologize, because that's exactly what I'd like to do. If you don't mind, play along and add the following simple sequence of numbers quietly in your head. Here we go. What is 1,000 plus 40 plus 1,000 plus 30 plus 1,000 plus 20 plus 1,000 plus 10? Thank you. So please raise your hand if you arrived at the answer of 5,000. Great. Please raise your hand if you arrived at the answer of 4,100. OK. So maybe 60, 40 percent, I would say. So what happens there is when you're adding the last two numbers, 4,090 plus 10, you miscarry the 1 and arrive at the incorrect answer of 5,000. Now, this is a gratuitous example, because I don't think anybody needed any evidence that we suck at mental arithmetic. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a genius or a savant or how much you practice. No human will ever perform numerical calculations as quickly and accurately as a computer. The question is why. Your brain is the most complex device in the known universe. You can recognize faces, understand speech, think, create, you can even juggle. All of those things are vastly more complicated than mental addition. The standard answer to this question is that we didn't evolve to do math. This is exactly true, of course. The mammalian brain evolved to do things like pattern recognition, discriminate a branch from a snake, not to calculate that the circumference of the snake equals 2 pi r. But I don't think the lack of evolutionary pressure is the full answer. Rather, I think neuroscience gives us a deeper answer. Neuroscience, as you know, is the study of the brain. And neuroscience is a very unique field, right? It's the only field in science in which the thing being studied is also doing the studying. And this means that neuroscientists are studying themselves which makes neuroscience a bunch of narcissists. <laughs> but um, neuroscientists do often view the brain as a computational device. So it has inputs, our hands, our eyes, and our ears. It stores memories and generates outputs. But the brain's architecture is entirely different from a standard digital computer. For one, the brain um, is not made of transistors. The brain is made up of neurons. So neurons have their dendrites and their axons, um, the inputs and the outputs, and they communicate through each other through synapses. One of the reasons we're bad at numerical calculations is that no engineer would ever use these things to build a calculator. They are noisy, they're slow, they have a lot of crosstalk, and they don't work well as switches. But fortunately, neurons are good at other things, like making associations. And that's because each neuron can communicate with thousands and thousands of others, and because neurons that fire together wire together. So that means that if you have two stimuli, such as the sight of the rose and the smell of the rose, and they activate different neurons, because neurons that fire together wire together, they might connect to each other, making an association. If neurons are good at making associations, you should be too. So let me prove to you that that's the case. I'm going to ask you three questions. Um, they're simple questions. Please answer out loud. And for the last one, just answer the first thing that pops into your head. In what continent is Kenya? What are the two opposing colors in the game of chess? Think of any animal. Great. So uh, I heard a lot of zebras. I heard some animals from Africa. So those were your answers because you're good at making associations. My point is, is that to understand why we're good at some things, like making associations, and bad at others, like mental arithmetic, we need to understand how our brains are built. And that this is really important, because what the brain is good at and bad at has a profound effect on the world in which we live. If we were going to make a list of society's most serious problems, 
it would probably include things like failure to address climate change, health issues such as obesity and addiction, irrational fear of GMOs and vaccines, war and terrorism, and the fact that we sometimes elect leaders that are either incompetent or self-serving. Now, do these problems have something in common? Absolutely. They're caused by our decisions, and our decisions are a product of our brain. So in a way, those societal problems reflect how our brains work. Our brains are imperfect. We have many biases, flaws, and glitches, which I will refer to as brain bugs. Let me give you an example of a brain bug. Answer the following question quickly. What do cows drink? <laughs> okay, so the parts, the circuits in your brain that just thought of milk, and I know you did, um, <laughs> are referred to as the automatic system, and they're driven by associations and emotions. The circuits in your brain that just that thought that said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, the answer is water, are referred to as the reflective system. If you need to guess somebody's age just by looking at them, your automatic system is pretty good. But if you need to decide on who to vote for or how much to save for retirement, you shouldn't rely on your automatic system because your automatic system is very biased and short-sighted. Ultimately, we don't understand how the brain makes even simple decisions, much less, much less complex decisions. But we know that we often make bad decisions, decisions that are not in our own best interest. Consider, for example, that in the 20th century, 100 million people died of cigarette-related causes. And every year in the United States, approximately 500,000 people die of cigarette-related causes, compared to approximately 300 people who die a year due to terrorism. When we start to smoke, are we making a decision that's in our own best interest or in the best interest of the tobacco companies? When we smoke, we're giving up our money and health with very little in return. So I think it's fair to say that we smoke because it's in the best interest of the tobacco companies. But how did this come to be? Well, it started because in the beginning of the 20th century, there was a revolution. Advertisers and propagandists figured out how to effectively um, sway and manipulate our opinions and decisions to suit their own best interests. Just as a digital computer can be exploited by a virus to do things it wasn't intended for, the human brain can be exploited by advertising, propaganda, um, fear-mongering, and populism to do things that are not in its own best interests. Perhaps the most serious consequence of our brain bugs is in the context of the democratic process. If we can't elect competent leaders, we can't address society's problems. And when we vote, our automatic system is often um, influenced by irrelevant factors, such as advertising and propaganda, um, fear, familiarity, and fake news. <coughs> we don't understand why it can be so easy to manipulate our, our opinions sometimes, but I think there's two um, factors that contribute. First, the brain is incredibly good at making associations, and second, we're very good at learning by observation. If you're born in the Amazon, you're going to learn the local dialect and how to gather food in the forest. If you're born in England, you're going to learn English and to root for England during the World Cup. So maybe animals are a bit smarter than us. Um, I think it would be hard to talk a cat into smoking because by showing it pictures of other cute cats smoking. <laughs> but humans are, of course, the smartest species on the planet. But what makes us smart is not that we know everything. It's that we can recognize our own ignorance. We can know what we don't know. Intelligence isn't about knowing all the answers. Sometimes it's about realizing how complex problems are and that we need to rely on experts to tell us the answer. Wisdom is in being able to distinguish the real experts from the fake experts. Your brain is solely responsible for your ability to make decisions, to think, create, to feel pain and pleasure. Your brain is also responsible for whether or not you believe your brain is responsible for your ability to think, create, feel pain and pleasure. This is hard to accept. It's hard to believe that I am my brain, my brain is me. 
but I think we have to accept this fact and recognize that in the same way that we're not inherently good at voting or making health decisions or financial decisions any more than we're inherently good at mental arithmetic. Recognizing this, I think, will help us make better decisions and better address society's most serious problems. Thank you. <laughs>